Good evening everyone. This is another video about Minimig and this time I'm going to test Terrible Fire cards. I have two dif different models here and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the development uh, and uh, how I made sure that Minimig is compatible with uh, Terrible Fire and also a few things about uh, setup. It's quite easy to set up a terrible fire card with Minimig, but uh, you need to do one crucial step. So I'm going to talk about that as well. So I guess let's start. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, download the files from minimig.ca uh, or just go to your SD card and look at the folder named uh, Minimic, then your version number, Terrible Fire 030, uh, amount of RAM on your board, and then the version number. That's the name of the directory. And inside you will find a file that you need to copy and paste to the root of your SD card. Once you do that, rename the file to Minimig1.bin. And that's about it. Uh, your Minimig is set uh, to run a Terrible Fire card. So, a little bit about the facts and the history of uh, Minimic uh, regarding this uh, particular terrible fire card. There was quite a few challenges uh, while I was um, making sure that the, this is possible at all. What we did first uh, at the beginning, uh, we added the uh, level shifters for Minimic and Deep64, and you would assume that anything you put in the socket will just work. But um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, there was a collision with a fast RAM that was added after. And uh, we discovered that Minimig never had a fast RAM in this particular old school 1.x version. And uh, there was something called um, auto configuration protocol uh, that was never implemented. So that was the first challenge. Auto config protocol is done in hardware in Verilog and it's a big deal because before, if you remember uh, using PC, uh, PC had these jumpers for the RQ, DMA channel or uh, address range. Um, all these jumpers uh, did pretty much uh, hardware configuration uh, where Amiga even back then had this magical thing called auto config protocol. It will do it by itself. It will self configure. And uh, that, that is just a uh, tribute to amazing engineering behind uh, this platform. So Minimig now uh, has uh, auto config that I've added for uh, configuring these two chips, uh, two meg of RAM for the fast RAM. And I need to make sure that uh, we don't have collision between address range uh, that uh, accelerator board is using um, and Minimig as well. So that was the first challenge, uh, fairly easy to solve. Second one was a boot ROM. Um, Minimic has this thing um, where once you turn on computer, before Amiga starts, um, Minimic will use the Kickstart replacement called boot ROM um, that will actually take the file from the SD card, a Kickstart file, and push that Kickstart file into the RAM and make sure that uh, area is used as a Kickstart. Uh, this is fine and works fine, uh, but uh, these accelerator boards, they usually have some sort of firmware and once uh, Amiga is up, they expect Amiga to be functional and not trying to push some bits and bytes into some obscure uh, address range. So that was a big collision. So for that reason, we um, designed this, uh, uh, we can call it a chip, but it's uh, right now just a um, module in Verilog uh, called Mia. And what Mia does, uh, it holds everything uh, until this process is done and does not rely on CPU to uh, move the data into RAM. Uh, it's all done in hardware and we kind of circumvented this collision. Uh, so that's another big uh, improvement. Uh, after that, many accelerator cards start working automatically um, and that is a big deal. And then finally, uh, there was a lot of uh, requirements for setting up uh, the signals to make sure that uh, everything is in sync. Uh, some changes that were made in the CPU bus. Uh, there is a lot of inaccuracy also in the Gary, 
uh, Gateway Array uh, implementation in Minimic, and I know um, Rene Cousins is working on making sure that uh, Gary is 100% uh, accurate. Uh, so those were all the challenges that uh, made this uh, marriage here between uh, Terrible Far Card and Minimic somewhat, diff somewhat difficult. And not on the electronics level, but rather on the logic level and the very look. But uh, when everything was said and done, uh, the cards start working fine. Uh, and uh, that was also beneficial for other accelerator boards. Uh, and uh, later I'm going to show what else is available for minimum and what else works fine. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the story. And without further ado, let's, let's power on the board. So now you see uh, this blinking Mia is pushing the uh, bits and bytes and the Minimig is up. And uh, now the operating system is loading. One thing to mention when you're using Terrible Fire card, you need to use um, the hard drive controller on the card, not the one on the Minimig. Because uh, looking at Logic Analyzer, um, this card is not trying to access the the controller here. I think that's because this is done for Amiga 500 where a Minimig is more implementation of Amiga 600 and Gale chip. So it's not trying to use that sort of thing. Um, maybe we can improve that in the future, but this is how it is now. And uh, there you go, OS is up and running. So right away you can see that this is a terrible fire card TF5 uh, 36. Uh, this is the version with uh, 64 um, megs of RAM, I believe. You see the Minimic chip RAM here. And perhaps we can see what uh, what we can read from, uh, let's say, CNC info first. Why not? So, of course, uh, we have uh, 68030. This card doesn't have FPU. Next model that I'm going to show has FPU, so we'll look into that. Uh, when in terms of performance, I mean, it is what it is. It's O30 uh, CPU running at 50 megahertz, and the performance will reflect the clock and the GPU you have. Um, CC info detects this acceleration, that's correct. You can see the performance. Uh, when it comes to memory, uh, we have this address range uh, detected. Um, this is a 32 bit RAM, probably a Zoro 3, uh, 64 megs. This is on Terrible Fire. 2 megs of fast RAM properly um, detected and arranged into this space, address space. So no collisions there. And then slow RAM, this is uh, coming from Minimig as well. 1.5 megabytes and finally 2 megabytes of chip. So everything's uh, accounted. Uh, if we go to boards, I guess this confirms what I was talking about. Uh, two megabytes of 16-bit RAM, uh, that's a Minimig um, auto config. And then 64 megs of uh, Zoro 3 coming from, of course, terrible fire card. So that's about it. Uh, performance itself is what you can expect from, from this um, setup. Uh, I haven't had a chance to um, test the um, limitations in terms of hard drive performance and you will see the numbers are quite low. I'm not sure why, is if this is normal for Terrible Fire card or there is still some problem with Minimic, but this is something to look into. If, um, I don't know, some drivers are needed or is just something weird happening here, that I don't know. But uh, even so, from what I can tell, works just fine. I mean, it's the speed is um, good enough to to use this uh, with double HD load, and uh, and I think that in many ways this is uh, just a phenomenal way to to go into the library um, of um, this classic 68K. Uh, the speed of the CPU, you can play Elite uh, Frontier and uh, you know many other games just fine. It's, it's pretty good. And at the same time, uh, with WHD load, it will cover a uh, classic um, library pretty well. So that's, uh, that's the story of, um, of this setup. Maybe we can um, 
if we can try to play uh, Gloom. For Doom, it's not really, uh, it's performing, but it's performing as, as well as you can expect from Mo30. But I think Gloom works uh, pretty well. And I don't have a um, joystick connected, so you'll give me a second, I'll be right back. So um, this, is, this is the frame, ra frame rate and what you can expect from uh, 030. It's consistent to what I'm seeing on my Amiga 500. So not bad considering that it's a uh, full screen. It's, it's pretty playable, I would say. So that's about uh, the Terrible Fire uh, 536, I believe. Yes, 536 with 64 megs of RAM. So let's look at the next card. All right, moving forward with the Terrible Fire 534. This is, uh, I would say my favorite Terrible Fire card, uh, even though it doesn't have 64 megs of RAM, has only four, but uh, this particular setup has FPU. How important that is for Amiga 500, 600-ish uh, environment? Uh, probably not a lot, because there's not a lot of programs and games using FPU. There's some, but I just like the fact that this board has FPU. Uh, so if if we go back and look at the CC info again, you will see that um, this time FPU is detected. It's 68882. And uh, for me, this is just a tribute how far we went with this uh, Amiga FPGA implementation where you have chipset in FPGA, uh, you have real RAM, then you have socket, you have real CPU, real FPU, uh, RAM on this board, uh, collaborating well with the RAM on this board through the FPGA. It's quite astonishing, I think, that um, this is a kind of modern Amiga made of modern parts that you can purchase and just uh, make sure that um, we can make sure that the platform uh, will continue living. So, what else I can show you? Let's see the performance, for example. I don't think anything unexpected will happen here. It's about the same 50 megahertz chip, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, CC4 is reporting 48.4, which is about that. If you look at the boards, uh, you'll see the <clears throat> similar thing. I'm not sure what is this 64K, uh, 4 meg that's definitely coming from um, from Terrible Fire card, it's a 32-bit RAM, so it's 0 0.3, then uh, 2 meg is, uh, uh, if I'm looking at the address range, I would say uh, it's coming from Minimig. <coughs> what is this 64K, I'm not sure, it's something probably that's coming from, from, I assume, Terrible Fire card, I'm not sure, and if I go to memory, this is consistent. This is 32-bit RAM from uh, TF card. This is the fast RAM from Minimig and uh, slow RAM from Minimig. And finally, cheap RAM. Everything is accounted. So yeah, that's that's about it. I think um, we can pretty much expect the the same performance from these two models. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said. Uh, I just, uh, I have one uh, classic Minimig in my collection uh, and I'm using exactly the same card as this one because I think it's it's pretty cool uh, to have the 32-bit CPU and I remember as a, as a kid with Amiga, O30 was always a dream. I mean, you know, Falcon had all th O30, Amiga 3000 and to have this CPU and FPU together with Minimig, it's, it's quite cool. So if I'm not forgetting anything, that, that's about it. That's about it. As you can see, it's easy to set up. Um, there is probably space for improvement uh, in terms of uh, maybe adjusting core, Minimig core, uh, but uh, so far so good. I have um, a lot of people using this setup uh, daily without any issues. So yeah, that's that's about that. And again, thanks for watching. Hopefully this time uh, audio is slightly better. I'm uh, trying to speak up uh, and I'm much uh, closer to the microphone. So 
Hopefully that will improve uh, audio. Talk to you next time. Have a good one.